Hello, I'm Dr. Vinny Karana from CNS Neurosurgery and Neurological Surgery Victoria. I want to share some pretty amazing innovations in minimally invasive techniques for brain and spinal surgery. This is a two-part YouTube video. The first part concerns the brain and the second part concerns the spine. I hope you find this presentation as fascinating as I do. Image A shows the normal curvature of the cervical spine. Image B shows the abnormal curvature in this particular patient. Image C shows the compressed spinal cord within the yellow dotted oval. Image D, a picture of what takes place within the surgery itself. Image E, the kinds of cages that we use, which are very small devices that are used to replace the disease discs in the neck and elsewhere. And image F shows the cages after surgery. And in this image, which is a post-operative x-ray of the same patient, you can see the cages on the left marked by the green arrows and on the right in a different view of that same patient's cervical spine. Her symptoms resolved beautifully and all of this was accomplished through a small incision in the neck. This image from another patient shows compression of the spinal cord marked by the red arrow from degenerative discs marked by the yellow arrows. Those degenerative discs have now been replaced by artificial discs which you can see an example of in the centre of this image. This is what an artificial disc looks like immediately after its placement during surgery between the bones of the cervical spine in this case. This is an x-ray of that artificial disc during extension of the neck by the patient and during flexion of the neck, see how the disc changes its position between the plates or its angulation to allow that movement to occur. A beautiful modern technology. This image shows a pair of artificial discs that have been put into the neck of this patient in place of his degenerative discs. And here you can see the neck incision barely visible in the same patient who has had two cervical discs inserted. And look at the lovely range of motion and a happy patient turning the head to his left and then to his right with better motion than he had prior to surgery and no more arm and neck pain. Similar things can be done in the lumbar spine for severe degenerative disease. Image A shows a CT spec scan highlighting with the tip of the yellow arrow on a very degenerative narrowed disc space. You can see that again in image B and in image C at the tip of the red arrow. In image D, this is following surgery, that disc space has been opened up from a very narrow height, which you see at the tip of the red arrow in image C, to a very normal looking height, which you see between the green lines of image D. And this image is the post-operative photograph of the same patient, now no longer crippled by the severe back pain that he had during such movements previously, and look at the range of motion that he has. This image shows the kind of device that is used, which is a lumbar cage made of peak reinforced plastic and titanium screws, all of which were inserted through a small incision in the abdomen. And similarly, multiple levels can be done in the lumbar spine. This procedure is anterior lumbar interbody fusion through a small incision in the abdomen. And now we can add to our surgical armamentarium the Mazor robot, which guides very precisely the trajectories of screws and rods that we put into the spines of patients in certain situations. This is what the robotic device looks like. And this is what the theatre setup looks like during robotic spinal surgery with the trajectory being determined by the robot and the instrument being inserted along that trajectory. All of this is designed to make the surgery safer, more precise and quicker.